Welcome to week three of the course. You may remember last week we looked at the define phase. Well, this week we're going to look at the measure phase. Now, during the measure phase, we take the particular product we're working on and we look at what we call the critical to quality parameters, or CTQ. For example, in this pen holder, one of the critical to quality parameters is the inside diameter of this base unit. If it's too small, then this part won't fit in. Similarly, the inside diameter of the pen holder if that's too small, then the pen won't fit in. We will explore further these concepts during the lecture. So we've moved through the defined phase, and now we're moving into the measure phase. So in the measure phase, we're going to look at some key performance indicators. We're going to look at some lean metrics. We're going to look at some Six Sigma or quality metrics, such as DPU, DPMO, and yield. And we're going to take the example again of the pen holder assembly. Now the key in measurements is you, you cannot fix what you cannot measure, at least in science and technology. Again, walking through the DMAIC, if you measure it, you must record it. If you record it, then you have to analyze it. If you analyze it, you should take action. If you take action, then you should follow up to check for effectiveness. And then if you follow up, you must close it out and lock it in. So I suppose what we're really trying to show here in this chart is that your metrics dashboard, so a lot of companies now will be moving towards a real-time metrics dashboard. So almost like a scoreboard in a, in, a, in a football game. There's really no point in trying to analyze this data retrospectively, you know, a month later or a quarter later or six months later. Ideally, um, the systems that are available today should allow you to see this in real time or, or at least daily. Let's look at some tools of the measure phase. So this isn't an exclusive list by any means, but we will be looking at some uh, what we call descriptive statistics. Uh, talk a little bit about sampling and just, you know, we'll sample um, some data from the uh, pen process, the pen manufacturing process. And we'll talk about the uh, normal distribution, just, just a little bit of, uh, on that. Uh, but in particular, we'll talk about the difference between a, a defect and a defective. Uh, we we'll look at some other quality metrics such as yield, roll throughput yield and DPMO and Sigma levels. But before we jump into that, we look at some uh, lean metrics as well. So if you remember our value stream map, and again, looking at the laser pointer here, uh, where we moved through five process steps here. Now we took some measurements here, but I didn't really talk about them in a lot of detail. And if you remember down the bottom, we drew this, but we didn't actually fill it in. So I filled that in. And the idea is down the bottom here, you know, in this value stream map, you can actually put in the value add time. So we're saying the value add time here is equivalent to the cycle time of the lathe. That's when we're actually adding value. But when the part comes out of the lathe, it sits in between the lathe and the milling machine for um, 3.5 hours. So that's what we measured. Again, a little bit of poetic license because uh, we, we know on the video that it actually didn't. But we'll, we'll just say that we found 250 pieces. So for a part to come out of here and get into the next step took three and a half hours. Uh, then while it was in the milling machine, it took 40 seconds cycle time. Again, 1.5 hours between these stations, 5 seconds in the robot, 2.5 hours between robot and inspect, uh, 30 seconds in the inspection station, 1.5 hours between those two, and then 10 seconds. So um, we can calculate uh, several lean metrics from this data. We can, for example, look at the um, amount of inventory or work in process, so the 250 plus 350 plus 200 plus 200. So we have a thousand pieces of whip or work in process, and they're all costing money. Uh, remember we said inventory was one of the big wastes in lean. Uh, we could call this finished goods, finished goods 200, and um, raw material coming in here 250. So that would be three metrics we could look at, the total inventory broken down into whip, uh, raw materials, and finished goods. Uh, we can also now look at, if we go back to, remember, uh, one of the earlier lectures, we looked at the this concept of uh, cycle time and lead time, or value add versus non-value add. So in this case here, we added up our cycle time to be 129 seconds, and we took our lead time to be 9 hours from the value stream map. So if we uh, convert the 9 hours to seconds, it's uh, 32,400, and there's a measurement in lean called process cycle efficiency, which is our total value add time, in this case, the cycle time divided by the lead time, and it's a ratio of 1 is to 251. Uh, world class can get that down as to, to 10 is to 1. Uh, but if you can get it, even get it down to 25 to 1, that will be um, considered um, world class as well. Uh, 
right? So basically we're looking at the portion of the time spent in the process that a product or service is actually being worked on. So it's this concept again of value add. So let's take another little look at value add. Value add, uh, well our customer first of all is whoever we deliver our product or service to. And how do we know we're adding value? Well, we know that our supplier gives us product services or information and we have to add either assembly, design, knowledge or analysis to those and then we output either product service or information. But too often, um, particularly in the service side and the information side, we just pass that on. We don't actually add any knowledge or analysis to it. So the question is really is, are you analyzing or adding value, adding knowledge, or are you just passing information on? If you're just passing information on in a lean environment, you should just get out of the way. And again, just looking at the earlier slide, uh, kind of give you this concept of rather than trying to spend a lot of time focusing on the value add time and reducing that, because we think, you know, once the part is in the lathe and the milling machine and the robot, it's pretty efficient. Uh, really, we might have find some way of improving the value add time. But really, there's a, there's a significant opportunity in reducing the non-value add time. And that's that's where the focus should be. So let's move on now to some of the quality measurements that we've looked at some of the uh, le um, lean measurements. We've decided that the key critical to quality metric is this inner diameter. I mean, there are other ones, but we'll say that this is the key one. So we've had complaints that these dials are falling out or maybe the hole is too small, this won't fit in. We started measuring. We've measured um, 200 inner diameters. So we've just taken a sample of those. Here's the data here. The big question is what are we going to do with all this data? The first part we measured was 30.727 millimeters, next was 30.191, next was 30.397 and so on. So we have a lot of data here and the question really is, is can we turn that data into information? We do that using descriptive statistics. So we now look at some descriptive statistics for this data. So in the data we have a count of 200, so there's 200 items of data that we looked at, that we collected, and we found the mean was 29.87 millimeters. So that's the average. Now I'm not going to go through these in a lot of detail. Some of them are self-explanatory. I have put a link up on Moodle to the Khan Academy which goes through these in more detail if you want to um, go through the calculations. But basically we have um, inner diameter and we have measures of uh, central tendency. So how centralized is the data? And there are three measurements there called the mean, the median, and the mode. Uh, the mean is the one I focused on here. Uh, the median actually for this set of data is very similar. Um, so the mean is the average. So you add them all up and divide by uh, 200. And the um, median then is half the values are above and half the values are below. So if you have some outliers, uh, the, the median would uh, tend to negate those outliers. And then the mode is the most commonly occurring value. But what's of interest to us, I suppose, in this is the max is 32.7 and the min is 27.66. So that's quite a big range for this diameter here. Now, we, we don't have the specification limits yet. John is going to talk about those in later lectures. But let's say just for argument's sake, specification limits were 29 to 31. So we could see we already have some values causing defects here and uh, causing defects here. Some are too large and some are too small. So if it's too large, there's really not much we can do. We might have to throw that part away. If it's too small, maybe we could redrill it again. It's rework. And then the standard deviation here um, and the range are considered the measures of variability. So how, how widely dispersed the data is. And um, standard deviation um, in particular is very useful when we're looking at uh, some of the more detailed statistical tools later on. So basically, the more spread apart the data, the higher the standard deviation. Another thing we can do in descriptive statistics is we can chart the data. So the chart, basically, you can transform data to show comparisons, trends, and so on. So this is just uh, a line chart or run chart. Now, you could do it by time along the bottom here. I just took them in sequence. But it would be nice to see if there was any trend within shifts across days, certain days of the week, and so on. But you can see here the, the data is quite varied. We have a lot, of, a lot of variation in the data. And what we're going to do now, again, is do some more detailed analysis in later lectures in the analyze phase and look to see what's actually going on here and why there's so much variability in our process. So basically, we've turned all of that data, the 200 items, 
into information where we can make some decisions. Now just to show you the power of graphs and charts, there's a big trend going on in the world right now around big data. So taking all of the information from different websites and so on that, that's been collected through our smartphones, um, through Facebook and so on. Here's a chart here by month and as you can see it peaks here around spring break which is kind of um, a big US uh, college holiday uh, probably I think around February uh, then it drops down again Mondays there seems to be peaks and then there's a peak leading up to two weeks before Christmas and then it drops down again so I challenge you to um, try and guess what this chart shows and I've put a link on Moodle where you can actually go in and read more about it that's uh, the end of uh, part A and uh, on the next section now, we're going to go and look in more detail on some of the quality metrics.